When I first started learning how to blacksmith, it took me a long time to get an understanding of how heat treating steel works. And I actually came at multiple incorrect understandings of it before I finally had it click in my head. So my hope is that with this video, I'll be able to give you a working understanding of heat treating steel that you'll then later be able to build off of. In this video, I'm gonna cover four different aspects of heat treating, hardening, normalizing, annealing, and tempering. In order to know how hard to make a tool, what we first need to understand is what is hardness? It turns out that hardness is actually a measure of how much a substance resists deformation of shape. For instance, if we take an egg, an egg is a very hard object, and you can actually put a lot of weight onto an egg without it cracking. Now, some of the strength has to do with the shape of the egg. The rounded shape can hold a lot more weight, but it is the hardness of the egg that allows it to retain that round shape and hold up weight. However, as soon as you do overpower an egg, it will no longer go back to its original shape and will crack. And this same thing will happen to steel. It, the harder an object is, the more brittle it becomes. And so this is what we need to keep in mind when we're deciding how hard we want to make a tool. Being able to manipulate a piece of steel in this way is how blacksmiths are able to get the proper degree of hardness for the job that they're doing. We can achieve this level of hardness by heating up our steel to its critical temperature, which is about 1600 degrees or an orangish color, and then rapidly cooling the piece of metal by submerging it into a bucket of oil or water, bearing in mind that water is a much harsher quench and depending on the hardness of your steel, it can actually cause your steel to shatter in the same way that a glass dish that is hot being placed in a cold sink is able to shatter. So now we have a very hard tool. But as I said earlier, hard equals brittle. And not, not every tool can be brittle. For instance, a hammer or a crowbar, if that is brittle, will just snap or shatter or chip. And that can be very dangerous. So we need to get our tools just hard enough that they will perform their job, but not so hard that they will break while doing so. So in order to do this, we temper them. Tempering is when you take the hardened piece of steel and you heat it up to a lower temperature that will take some of the hardness out, but not all of this. All of your tempering is done below a red heat. So it's below a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. In order to tell how much you've tempered your steel, what you need to do is take and polish one side of it so you can see the bare metal. Then as you heat it up, you'll actually see colors forming on the steel. What these colors are is actually oxidation that is directly based on the temperature of the steel. And knowing the steel's temperature allows us to determine how much of the hardness has been removed from it. I will actually temper most of my knives in the kitchen oven because I can control the exact temperature the steel gets to and can maintain that consistently throughout the entire edge. Inversely, I can do the opposite by letting my metal cool slowly in order to become softer. There are two extents that I can do this to. The first one is called normalization, and that is just letting the piece cool on its own in the room temperature air. The second is called annealing, and this is where I let it cool very slowly, typically by turning off the forge, putting it inside, and then blocking off all the air traveling through so that it cools at a very slow rate. This makes the steel much softer. I will typically normalize or anneal my steel before I go and start grinding, as making the metal softer at those stages makes that go a lot quicker. Then after I've ground, I will take, reheat, treat it, and harden it, and then temper it so that I get the perfect amount of hardness for the job I am doing. I really enjoy showing people how heat treating steel works, as it shows just how scientific blacksmithing is, and it helps people to be able to get precisely what they want out of a tool. 